Hey guys, today we uh, tie another pipe fly and we uh, do a little bit with bucktail, natural colors, white, gray and dark gray and uh, we also use a bit of ripple ice fiber, same colors. Um, so it will be just a small baitfish pattern, really natural looking and um, and give it a little tail with some some feathers and uh, that's kind of it um, really imitating a small natural looking bait fish that's all we want to do with it so um, you can see the length that we tie it is uh, the maximum length of the bucktail on the hook so uh, like that so around that size would be the fly um, so let's get started. We tie this fly on a RX hook. It's a TP610. Um, just really got a wide gap. It's not uh, that thick wired, so it's not as heavy as some other hooks, which I really like on that pattern because uh, it's just a bit of bucktail and uh, there won't be much weight to the fly anyway, so uh, that's probably quite good. And now we just tie it down, just get the feathers in here, so that will be our tail. You can, if you want, go one underneath to lift it up a bit, but it's really not, not that necessary. I just leave them like that. They are anyway really light and they always go in the water a little bit up. Um, what we do then is we take a few strands of the uh, really thin lateral scale. So we take uh, just two strands, not much. I don't uh, want to have a full flesh tail. We just tie it in, same length, around the same length. Just two loose wraps, fold these back and move the uh, thread back. It's um, not really a difficult fly, but it's a little bit time consuming fly because uh, if you do it with less amount and more steps, usually it looks better and it also moves better in the water. So we really only take small amounts of uh, the materials. So this is the bucktail for the tail. We just take a white bucktail. We are not reversing it, we're just tying it in. Two loose wraps. See if it's distributed around the hook. If not, we can move it around with the fingers like that. And then just tighten it. Two, three strong wraps. And then we can grab our scissors. And just cut that off. Yeah, it's really good to uh, cut extents off like that. Because uh, it keeps everything less bulky and we can... Uh, achieve a really clean tie so uh, just move the bucktail where it's around the hook shank here perfect and we can tie that down like that and what we do then is um, I have a little bit of the white squimpish hair left really also don't need that much Just cut it off, this goes to the bin. And then we see around that length. First thing we do with the squimper share is uh, we brush it out. If you uh, ever want to try squimper share, you can use uh, my Instagram name to get uh, some discount at squimper shares. Um, we pull out the tips and realign them like that. And then we check the length, how we want to tie it in. Here are the feathers, so that's around the length we want to have. And then we tie it a little bit, uh, cut it short here, but leave it like one centimeter longer as we uh, will tie it in reverse. Just fold it around gently, two loose wraps. See if it's distributed good around the hook shank. It could be a little bit more. You can just push it with the fingers together then. And then we just tighten it. 
we do then is uh, just loosen it with the fingers. You can get a reverse tool then, or put just a pen and uh, just slide that gently back. And then just make two good wraps on top of it. <clears throat> what we do now is uh, we take a little bit of the Hedron Polo Flash just to get a little bit more bling in the tail and uh, yeah, nearly always using this stuff so we take like three or four strands you never need that much of it so it's lasting really ages on the uh, six or seven but it doesn't really matter um, we just put it on top of the uh, scrimper shell just uh, tie it in with two wraps Fold the remaining bits back and uh, just tie it down. Make sure you tie on top of the scrimper shell so it's really blending into uh, the material and then you can just brush it in and then we have a really nice tail for our fly. Well, what we do now is we work with the bucktails. So we take the uh, light grey for the top and the uh, white for uh, the belly and we always tie in really really small amounts. Um, Make sure you're using a uh, long bucktail here, a long and soft bucktail is uh, the best to use here. So that's probably the amount of what I'm using. Um, if I would have to take a guess, I would guess it's around 30 to 40 strands of, uh, of the bucktail here. Hard to count, but it's really, it's hardly nothing. And we just tie it in two wraps on the bottom. And you can still move it as you want to distribute it on the uh, on the bottom side of the fly. And then we do the same thing with the uh, the light grayish bucktail. Like that. You really pinch it with the fingers so it's not moving anywhere when you put tension on the thread. You go one, two, three thread wraps. And what we do here is as we tie a hollow, uh, hollow tie fly, we really uh, remove these butts here because they would uh, then, if you're unlucky, stick out and it would be just not looking nice. It's not really a problem for, for the moving of the fly, but just looks better when uh, they are clean here because then we can move the thread out and there are no butts sticking out. If I would tie on top of the bucktail here it would be something different then you can uh, just leave it but uh, we want to tie a fly here with nearly any material but a lot of movement and uh, that's the perfect thing to do with, uh, with bucktail. These cones I really always like to insure them with a, a little bit of super glue so um, the thread is not sliding down there. Um, also make sure that you're holding your uh, bobbin, uh, how do you say, uh, perpendicular to uh, the hook shank. So you have to hold it in, in, in one level or one line, otherwise uh, your, um, your cone will be slightly uh, tapered to one side. So like that. We have a quite flat angle, maybe make it even a little bit flatter as this is still the tail section and we uh, we uh, don't want to have it that bulky as it's a really small thin babyfish but the water of course will push it together like that. And um, what we do then is we take the uh, ripple ice fiber, this is the uh, minnow mix and we really just you just pull it once, just get a few fibers, not too much, and just tie it in front of the cone, just with a few loose wraps and then tighten it, and then we just distribute the uh, material around, and this is just giving us this um, shimmering pearly effect of, of, of a baitfish, like of the scales, and it's really just a decent flash, you can just brush it into the material. And, uh, I really like them, it really looks really cool on the water. So, um, that really is doing the trick here. And uh, re repeat this step at least two times now. So, really take small amounts of a uh, white bucktail again for the belly. Ok. 
can cut that straight away. Uh, we use the uh, light gray. back again. From the uh, tail to the um, head will slightly get darker on the um, on the back so we have a white bucktail and light gray light gray light gray and then we go to um, this dark shadow gray um, just to uh, get this really nice back stripe of a, of a bait fish just to get the color scheme right. You can also do that with, uh, you don't have to use uh, white and grey for example, you can do that with, uh, with neon yellow as well if you want to, but uh, it always looks cool when you get darker on the, uh, on the back if you are moving towards the head, at least that's what I think. So we uh, reverse that as well, and pull the uh, thread out straight so we are not trapping any bucktail here. And because we're doing so many steps, that's what it. Uh, that's why it takes so long. We could also cover the middle piece just with some polar reflector flash. That would be a um, quick and dirty tie. Really, still looks nice. But to uh, to to get this really nice uh, pushing and moving of the bucktail, um, just do it with hardly any material and do it multiple times. It really, it's, it's it's worth it. So now. We are going to uh, get going further to the um, um, to the head section, but now again, after the cone, we just uh, tie a little bit of the uh, minnow mix ripple ice fiber in here, so uh, just to ensure this little sparkle in it, like that. It's also. When you brush it, you also break a few of the hairs again. And if you fish it, the uh, fish will—it's—it's it's not the most stable product. This replies fiber, and uh, during time during fishing, it will definitely lose some of these uh, strands. But they are looking so so cool, and you can tie quite a few flies with it if you're only using hardly any material. And uh, yeah, definitely worth uh, trying it out on your minnows. Also, like to use it uh, underneath my heads when I do heads with monster duck, it's also really really cool but uh, we'll see that later anyway. Um, so same procedure again, just a few ties here and now we get our light grey again it's um, also really like to uh, fish this fly for sea bass. Um, then it also goes a little bit quicker. Sea bass or striper, or what you want to fish it, um, because then you're using smaller um, hooks and uh, short shanks, and then you just need two or three layers of bucktail, and the fly is finished. So, um, but on a on a on a pike hook, especially like one one with the uh, bigger shank. So uh, this is, as I said before, the RX TP610, and here we, of course, have quite a long hook, a shank to tie a long pike fly on it, and uh, then it's a little bit more work, but it's definitely worth it. So same procedure again, we uh, reverse this. Pull the thread out straight and build a cone in front of it. Make sure you're not trapping any fibers because you really want to uh, have a clean reverse kind of a clean cut here of the fibers when you reverse it, otherwise you won't have the possibility to um, to um, make a nice cone in front of it. Um, therefore it's also important that you um, when you tie in two different colors of, of, of bucktail top and bottom that you really tie them onto the same position of the hook otherwise it won't work with uh, reversing the fibers and um, you also have to see that you're tying in the uh, 
same amounts of bucktail because if I would tie quite a big amount of bucktail on the top and a small amount of bucktail on the belly and I would reverse them then I would have a really high bulk on the on the on the back side and a really small bulk here and then I have to build my cone up uh, like, like, like in an angle because um, I will over exceeding the height of the um, of the um, smaller bulk of the bucktail there so uh, make sure you tie on top of belly around the same amounts in it. So last time minnow mix ripple eyes. Just two loose wraps, fold it back, tie it in. And you really see it through all the body that it's really, I hope you can see that in the camera, it's really shining. It really looks like the scale of a fish. Uh, it just looks so cool. So we do the same thing now again. We uh, grab some white bucktail for, uh, for the belly. Always make sure you remove the uh, the under. Here are the shorter fibers in the bucktail, as we don't need them. Like that. Really need to. Make sure they are tight and well and nicely and then finally we take our dark grey bucktail, grey shed, I don't know what the color was called, never mind, we just need a few strings. Like that. Now we just tie it nicely on top as we did it with the uh, with the light grey bucktail, like that. And also here we just remove the excess. And then we reverse this one here as well. Just leave yourself some time with reversing it. So just give yourself some time to tie a perfect fly instead of uh, rushing through it and then uh, just have a medium fly in your box which you will plan ignore because you don't think it really looks cool. Like that. And we take a little bit of super glue here as well to uh, stabilize the uh, the um, cone in front of it and then we really just gently go up again and then we have our kind of fly finish and the water will look like that so it will get really slim and when you stop it the uh, bucktail will come up again and uh, so it gets a lot of movement in the water so what we do now is we'll uh, take our lateral scale again this is the really, really thin one. So we tie one on the left side and we tie the other one on the right side. Just loose turns, get everything in position and then perfect. Just tie it down. And now we come to our other colors of the ripple eyes. So we get some small amount of the uh, minnow mix again, but this time only for the belly. And then we get some of this silver. What is it? Hologram, hologram silver. Also looks really, really cool on the fly. We just tie that on the on the upper bit. Like that. 
take a little bit of super glue here again as the um, the ripple ice is quite slippery and um, you want to place a little bit of the uh, ripple ice fiber gray minnow which is non-sparkling just on top of it like that to uh, get this dark back silhouette so just a small amount reverse it and now we still have this tiny bit left here and this we'll use for our um, monster duck head so we used to have some uh, dark gray monster up. Uh, here it is, so uh, bait fish grey. And we uh, use that for the uh, top layer. So but this time we, we don't wanna we wanna have a fly which is hardly any weight and um, which is going down quickly. Um, so we hardly putting any material in, this is really hardly to nothing. I think with that amount of, of dub I'm using here which is uh, hard to describe, but it's maybe the th thickness of a tenth of a pencil. Um, you probably could use uh, tie 50 or 60 streamers with the package. So really hardly anything. And we do the uh, same thing with the uh, with the pearl white for the uh, for the belly. Just to get a clean finish in the head section. Really looks cool then. Tie it in, two loose wraps. And then we can see how it looks. And just get a few strong wraps here. And apply a little bit of super glue now on the thread. Because that's the only possibility to get it really precisely into the gap of, uh, of the monster dub or the, uh, the dubbing, depends on what you're using. Uh, without gluing the fibers and then we can cut it and really can work the fibers back and uh, get our fly cool looking. So I'll just brush it back like that and uh, if you remember <laughs> my um, my uh, Hovering perch fly. That's the tip of the Popeye cut off, but it's perfect to just slide it on top and uh, to get uh, a nice uh, shape in the head. And then we uh, put some epoxy on there and uh, get some ice on. For this pattern, of course, we're using smaller eyes, uh, natural looking color. Um, got some nice brown, roach colored, colored eyes. So that could be really cool. Just mix up quickly some epoxy. Just get that here. And some on the other side as well. Like that. And now we really work it into the material. So really hold the uh, the dubbing tight with two fingers. Otherwise, you just pull out the fibers, and then your head looks messy. So we're really holding your the head tight like that, and then we can really press the uh, epoxy with the needle into uh, the material. It gives it really really strong and solid head, and also um, makes sure that there's no air tra um, trapped inside the head. Sometimes when you just put a bunch of epoxy onto a, a bulky head, then you have air in the middle and uh, you can isolate this hair, uh, air if you're unlucky and then you have an air bubble in your streamer head and it won't go down, that would be a pity. So uh, only advantage is to really work the epoxy into the flight. And then I found these little eyes, hope you can see them, I think that are eight millimeter eyes natural looking natural brown looking eyes and uh, we just place them on top of here like that and one on the other side and then we take this one out and made a cut in here so really easy to get out 
um, to get the eyes in position. You always want to uh, have the material moving freely, so um, it can get in the natural shape you want it, and then it will be looking like that if the eyes are dried. But I got one fly prepared already, so I had one tie before, and uh, this is how it looks. And in the water, it will get them really slim, natural baitfish looking pattern, and that might be really, really cool. So uh, enjoy tying this one. Thanks for watching.